Hey guys, welcome to this video on the change of variable method. So here we have our problem. We want to solve the following recurrence relation runtime using the change of variable method. And in our purple rectangle here, we have our equation or function, and it says t of n is equal to two times t of the square root of n plus log base two of n. So first thing I wanna do is get rid of that square root of n to make it look a little bit better for me. So we're going to rewrite the equation Okay, and now our equation will look like this. It says t of n equals two times t of n to the power of a half because n to the power, power to the one half is equivalent to the square root of n. All right, so plus log base two of n. So it's just to make it look a little bit better for myself. Uh, next up, I don't like this log base two of n so what we're going to do is we're going to let some some uh, some variable, we're going to call it m, we're going to let that equal to um, log base 2 of n. So we're letting m equal log base 2 of n. All right. So that way we can get rid of that log base 2 of n. And if we do this, we need to put the whole equation in terms of m as well. So um, this implies that 2 to the power of m is equal to 2 to the power of log base 2 of n, which is equal to n. So now wherever we see n, we can replace that with 2 to the power of m. And of course, that implies that 2 to the power of m divided by 2 is equal to 2 to the power of log base 2 of n divided by 2, which is equal to n to the uh, 1 half power. Okay, so now let's rewrite our equation. So we're going to rewrite um, the equation. And this time we're going to substitute our variable m for all of our n variables. All right, so we get t of 2 to the power of m because uh, n is equivalent to 2 to the power of m in terms of m. And this is equal to 2 times t of 2 to the power of m divided by 2 plus m. Okay? All right. Now, uh, let's make it look a little bit better. So we're going to uh, use a function called s, and we're going to let s take in a parameter. We're going to call it m, and we're going to set it equal to t of 2 to the power of m. Now, what this means is, this means that when m equals 1, so, we have, so we'll have s of 1, that means that that will be equivalent to t of 2 to the power of 1. If we had s of 2, then we get t of 2 to the power of 2. If we had s of m uh, minus 1, then we get t of 2 to the power of m minus 1. Okay? And then if we had a s of m divided by 2, then we get t of 2 to the power of m divided by 2. All right. So I'm going to erase that so that you guys understand what we're doing here. Since s of m is equal to t of 2 to the power of m, that means that s of m is equal to 2 times t of 2 to the power of m divided by 2 plus m. All right. And... We want to get all of this um, looking like a recurrence relation. So what is our t of 2 to the power of m divided by 2? Well, we just worked that out. So that would be um, s of m divided by 2. So we get 2 times s of m divided by 2 plus m. And again, that's because um, we had, you know, if we had s of 1, we get t of 2 to the power of 1. If we had s of m minus 1, we get t of 2 to the power of m minus 1. And if we had s of m divided by 2, we get t of 2 to the power of m divided by 2. All right. So that's how we got that s of m divided by 2 here. Okay. So now the equation looks uh, simple enough for us to use uh, a technique to solve it. So we can use the master theorem. I'm not going to use it in this video, but I will leave a, a link in the description below uh, so you guys can use it. So if we use the master theorem, then we'll see that S of M, B 
belongs to big O of M times log of M. All right, so we said our M variable was log base two of N. So that means that S of M belongs to big O of log base two of N times log of log base two of N, okay? And um, S of M, we said, is equivalent of T of two uh, to the power of M. And of course, that is equivalent to our T of N. So T of N is big O of log base two of N times log of log base two of N. All right. And really the base doesn't matter in this case. Um, so we simply can say that uh, T of N belongs to big O of log of N times log of log of N, okay? And if you don't understand why the base of logarithms don't matter when it comes to big O, or really uh, any of the asymptotics such as theta or big omega, um, I'll leave a link in the description below uh, of a video showing why that is the case. And I think that's it, guys. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave any questions you have. Let me know if I made any mistakes, likes, comments. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.